all of recorded history, we can find examples of human aggression and violence. Uh, one needs only look at the um, the amount of wars going on in the, the world at, at any one time. Um, what makes people violent? Well, that's the focus of this mini lecture. Um, say you approach an alligator. Um, it's likely going to do one of two things. It's either going to snap at you, uh, fight you, or it's going to run away, swim away, uh, flee. That's called the fight or flight response. Um, all animals have um, a fight or flight response, and all animals have a limbic system. Um, the fight or flight response is um, developed within the limbic system, um, especially in the um, almond shaped structure um, called the uh, amygdala. <clears throat> um, evolutionary psychologists and human biologists um, look at um, the evolution of of the brain and violence um, and find that um, higher level primates including human beings and hominids um, have what they call a cerebral cortex which is the lobe structures in the brain. The higher um, level an animal has of making good rational decisions the uh, more uh, mass they have to their cerebral cortex. Um, Many animals have very little uh, brain outside their limbic system and basically they're um, stuck in the fight or flight response nearly all of the time. In addition to evolutionary psychology, we can look at violent behavior through uh, various other lenses, including um, the lens of learning theory, including social learning theory. Um, this can be very much impacted by um, developmental, environmental type factors as well as trauma, especially trauma in our childhoods. You know, one needs only needs to look at the um, ACE study, which looks at early childhood trauma and finds that um, later outcomes um, as adults, people are impacted um, quite significantly by um, childhood trauma. Um, that could include um, violent trauma um, which might make a person much more likely to act in a fight-or-flight uh, mode uh, more often than a person who may have not gone through a traumatic event. Um, so within your limbic system it's not communicating as well with your frontal lobe um, and your frontal lobe isn't communicating back to the limbic system saying hey settle down it's just acting on impulse. When examining violence it's important to not forget the lens of biology especially how um, it's influenced by um, learning behaviors. And some of the best ways to look at human behavior is to look at species that are not human. Um, for example, tigers um, can be very well trained um, to do you know, circus type acts. Um, but at the same time, even the best trained tiger can still lash out. Uh, why is that? Well, it's because they're um, they don't have the uh, cerebral cortex that a human being has, um, therefore they're you know more likely to lash out than a human being would in a similar type of situation when they feel threatened. Um, but nevertheless, humans still sometimes um, act out violently. Even some of the um, nicest, mellow uh, people, given the right circumstances, are likely to still. Um, you know, be overpowered by their limbic system because it's such a profound threat. In defining aggression, aggression is the attempt to harm another individual uh, physically or socially or to destroy um, property or an object. Hostile aggression has the intent to cause a victim pain or discomfort where instrumental, um, instrumental aggression is um, carried out to um, help a person uh, gain material goods or other rewards. For example, if you're um, robbing a bank and you um, shoot somebody, uh, that would be instrumental aggression. You're not intending to cause them pain or uh, discomfort, but they're getting in your way, uh, so you, you take them out. Passive aggression does not involve direct physical harm, but it is hostile in its intent. Uh, for example, if you're withholding information because um, you don't like somebody, um, withholding that information is a passive-aggressive um, action. There are many different theoretical perspectives that try to um, explain aggression. I just want to focus on a, a few different um, ones of these. 
Um, there is the displaced aggression model, which is um, the thought that somebody um, is very stressed out throughout the day, and instead of taking it out on you know where it belongs, they'll come home and uh, you know take it out on their spouse or their dog, or um, and sometimes they may come home, head to the bar. Um, pick up a hitchhiker and you know violently hurt that person um, you know physically sexually whatever um, so that's a, an example of displaced aggression um, then there's degree indifference which basically is the perspective that humans only differ from other animals by um, the extent that we developed um, differently via evolution um, some of the other perspectives that um, are found within our text are the psychodynamic model ritualized aggression and the um, frustration aggression uh, model. In regards to learning theory, um, there are three uh, types of people that um, are considered major role models um, for uh, people in generating uh, violent types of behaviors. One is um, violent family members. So family members that um, are violent are going to uh, more likely raise people that are uh, more likely to be violent. Uh, members of a violent subculture, if a uh, deviant um, juvenile uh, delinquency type group um, is violent, uh, the members, especially the new members, um, are likely to learn to be violent. And then there's mass media uh, role models where um, you know, violence on TV, video games, things like that. People see that and they, it gets their blood flowing and it teaches them, it, it starts to rewire their brains to possibly be more violent. Nevertheless, it's really important to, to note that just because there's violent role models, because somebody's playing many, many violent video games and, and watching, you know, violent uh, television, um, it does not necessarily um, mean that um, it's going to lead to violent behavior. Uh, there's some um, evidence to suggest, you know, even the opposite, where um, people may be able to get their uh, aggression out through um, playing violent video games. Cognitive models of violence tend to look at our um, thoughts that roll through our mind, sometimes called the, our scripts. Um, they, people believe that our thoughts, our scripts, um, learned through everyday daily experiences, um, tend to influence the thoughts that roll through our head, which tend to influence our daily experiences, you know, and this is a, a cycle. And sometimes violence gets um, mixed up in with this cycle, and people are, you know, learn to become more habitually violent. Uh, and then there's also what they call hostile attribution, meaning that people tend to um, place more emphasis on an event and perceive that as more hostile towards them than it really is. So um, some people who tend to, um, you know, to lash out real quick, you know, may see, you know, hidden meaning in things or take insults where there really was no insult um, and get themselves into trouble because of their, you know, their aggressive actions back. We can break aggressive behavior down into two basic types of aggression. We have overt aggression, which usually involves um, direct confrontation with the victims and um, tries to cause physical harm. And then there's covert aggression, which is more the, the passive aggression, which relies on concealment, dishonesty, sneaky behavior, and does not involve um, direct uh, aggressive confrontation, um, usually with the victim. Um, there's a few different types of forms of aggression. There's reactive aggression, which is spontaneous, and usually in response to uh, some type of provocation or instigation. And then there's proactive aggression, which usually is premeditated and it's used to uh, meet a certain goal. Um, and then there's the contagion effect, which happens when people copy a behavior that is portray portrayed in um, things such as the news or the media.